So basically, if there's a person with type 2 diabetes listening to us today and they're taking 75 units That's of insulin, the, one of the takeaways should be, what do I need to do with my nutrition and other pharmacologic activities plus exercise plus everything that's under my control to maybe get that down to 35 where I would be at a physiologic level? Absolutely. There are things, as you in, already insinuated, weight loss, if you can get people to do it, exercise. And then we can add medications uh, in combination with insulin, uh, insulin sensitizers or some drugs to help you lose weight that will all uh, also allow you to get that dose uh, of uh, insulin, uh, you know, uh, reduced. The other thing we showed in this study, Dr. Del Prado, who's past president of the European Diabetes Association, we took normal, healthy, lean kids, 18, 25 years of age. And we uh, gave them, we put them on the Clinical Research Center uh, for uh, three days, and we gave them a very, very low dose uh, of insulin infusion. And we raised their fasting insulin from eight, which is what a normal, normal. person would be, to 20, which is really quite low. And within 48 to 72 hours, they were as insulin resistant as a type two diabetic patient. So hyperinsulinemia induces insulin resistance. This is Wait unequivocal. a second, wait a second. Why is that the case? So what insulin does is it downregulates the insulin signaling transduction system. So that insulin, when it binds to its receptor and then it activates IRS-1 and PI3 kinase and AKT, that system is downregulated by hyperinsulinemia. All of this that I'm telling you about, it's all published. These are all uh, studies done in, 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 in humans. And this also been shown in, in rodent models uh, as, as well. So this is another reason why we don't want people to be hyperinsulinemic. You have to explain that to me again, Ralph. That is mind boggling to me. Yeah. I, would never, I would never have predicted that. So yeah. let me say it back to you because I'm, I feel like I missed it when I was writing something down. Yeah. You took normal volunteers yep. who had a fasting insulin of eight. Yep. And they're lean healthy. Okay. And Yum. you simply infused insulin in them, presumably with glucose. Oh yes, of course. Yeah. On the clinical research center where yeah. we can monitor and keep the glucose perfectly constant. We're not letting the glucose change. So person shows up, insulin eight, glucose is 90. Yep. You do a euglycemic clamp yep. where you bring insulin up only to by 20. one and a half per, one and a half X M to Much 20. less than would yeah. be when you eat a meal. Exactly, not even a postprandial bump. Correct. But now it's constitutively sitting there at 20. Yep. And you've obviously had to bring glucose, you had to infuse glucose to maintain euglycemia. Correct. Did you say that in four days? 48 to 72 hours, and these people are as insulin resistant as type two diabetics. Okay, again, very, very counterintuitive because yeah. if, our, if our model is that insulin resistance, which is the hallmark factor contributing to type two diabetes in the combination of beta cell fatigue is driven by lipotoxicity, which we're that, gonna come that, to. That's an important one, yes. yep. These people didn't have any of that. No, they These were... people didn't have in, any of the intramyocellular lipid <clears throat> that we talked about with your colleague, no. Jerry Reven, as a predisposing factor. It's the direct effect of insulin downregulating the insulin signaling system and probably other distal metabolic within the cell uh, as well. Uh, okay, so then when you turn the clamps off, so let's just say we ran this for 72 hours. Yeah. We've made them functionally diabetic. Turn the clamps off. How many hours or we days? We didn't do that. What okay. would you predict? Uh, I would predict uh, probably within 24 to 48 hours, they would return to normal because we did this acutely. Now, if we were able to do this for several months, uh, then I would anticipate that the insulin resistance would remain for a long period of time. Uh, and remember, when we treat type 1 diabetics, we're always giving the insulin into the periphery. Uh, and you or I, when uh, you ingest the meal, where does the insulin go? It goes into the portal vein. So the liver is seeing a high level of insulin. That's good. It says stop making glucose. But now it removes half of the insulin. So how much insulin gets into the periphery? Half of what you secreted. Why? Because is we don't want the insulin in the periphery over insulinizing the periphery because it would make the uh, muscle tissue very insulin resistant. So the portal 
the pancreas secreting insulin into the portal circulation. Liver sees the insulin. Good, stop making glucose, but it also takes up half of the insulin. So less insulin get enough to nourish the muscle, okay? Yep. Enough to shut down the fat producing free fatty acids, but not enough to hyperinsulinize the system. And in a certain way, if you're a diabetic and you are insulin resistant or an obese person, and you are insulin resistant, and you are hypersecreting insulin, it's kind of working against you because it's a reverberating system that's making the insulin resistance aggravated. So w w one of the big things that we've forgotten is that insulin, I told you, there are two problems in diabetes. Yeah. One is you don't make enough insulin, the other is you're insulin resistant. You need to attack both problems. Uh, and the paper that I recently published, uh, which is a perspective in Lancet Diabetes Endocrinology, was to bring people back to, look, we're, we're focusing on obesity and weight loss, and we should, but we need to remember that we still have a genetic cause for the insulin resistance. You know, you go back to 1950, uh, you know, the incidence of diabetes was 2%. I've seen even data that says it was 1% well, as, 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 as recent as 1970. It's very low. Yeah. But these people were all lean and they're insulin resistant. So there's a genetic cause of the insulin resistance.